decided to talk about riding confident and handling. We talk about electronics for safety under braking under braking condition, safety mm -hmm. under accelerating condition, performance under accelerating condition. Electronics for riding pleasure. Now it's the time to talk about electronics for riding comfort and handling. Thanks to the electronics Aprilia Now, Caponotto Evander has a new and advanced semi-active suspension system that has two main targets. The first one is to maximize the comfort by reducing vertical acceleration of the chassis. So you have less acceleration of the chassis that means less, less acceleration on your body, so it's more comfort. The second target is to, pro, to enhance the handling by providing the best setting possible for the body. Before talk more deeply regarding this Aprilia Dynamic Damping, this new semi-active suspension system, it's better to tell you some general definition about suspension. A suspension is made from two main elements. The first one is the elastic element, typically a coil spring. This element uh, delivers a force proportional to the stroke speed. Sorry, deliver a force proportional to the stroke of the suspension. And this element carries the whole static load of the body. The second element is a damper, typically an oil damper. This element delivers an equitable force at steady state, so when the suspension is not moving, but plays a crucial role in dynamic condition because this element delivers a force proportional to the stroke speed of the suspension. So when the suspension is moving, this element delivers a force, a dissipative force. <laughs> it's obvious that you are able to control one or two, one or both elements you can control the dynamics of the body, the behavior of the body. Electronically controlled suspension can be semi-active when only the damping element can be controlled in dynamic condition, that means while you are riding, and active when also the elastic element can be controlled when energy is needed from the elastic element in dynamic condition. As I told you, we are talking about semi-active suspension, so suspension where the damping element is controlled, and because the damping element needs, because the damping element delivers a force proportional to the stroke speed of the suspension, it's mandatory to calculate the stroke speed of the suspension. The system needed to understand the dynamic behavior of the suspension to control it. We are talking about the temper, so the stroke speed is mandatory because it delivers a force proportional to this stroke speed. You can calculate the stroke speed in three different ways. The first one is to measure it directly, but it's difficult to find the stroke speed sensor for, for a suspension. The second way is by using an accelerometer. You can measure the acceleration of the moving part of the suspension by, for example, fixing two accelerometers on the front and two accelerometers on the rear, one on the frame, the other one on the ring, front ring, and the dual for the rear, one on the frame, the other one on the rear ring. And by measuring the acceleration of this moving part of the suspension, and due to the uh, an algebraic integration, mathematical integration, you can calculate the stroke speed. But you have two main problems by using accelerometer. The first one is, due to the algebraic integration, you have to filter at low frequency the signal. When you filter, you take out signal, you cut the signal. And you cut also useful signal. This is the first problem. The second problem is that this kind of solution are mainly used in car, where you have the engine elastic <coughs> suspended. So, the vibration transmitted from the engine to the chassis, where the accelerometer are located, are much lower compared to a motorcycle. Vibration transmitted from the engine to the chassis of motorcycle are very high. So accelerometer measures the acceleration of the moving part of the suspension, but also the acceleration of the vibration of the engine. So you have also to fill the high frequency of the engine. <coughs> so by using accelerometer, you need to filter at low frequency and also at high frequency. When you filter, you lost signal, useful signal. Useful signal is the signal 
that show the dynamics we have in this discussion. So you have the loss of a currency of the information. We rejected this solution after four months of testing because the loss of a currency. If the information are not accurate, the performance of the strategy will be lower than you will expect. The second solution is by measuring a position, the position of the suspension by using the potentiometer. In this way, by an again derivation, you can calculate the stroke speed with a very good accuracy of the information because you don't need filtering from the signal. So, what are our solutions? For the front fork, and we have a pattern on it, we use a pressure sensor that measures the pressure that there is inside the fork. As you know, inside the fork there is a defined volume of air that increases its pressure with the compression of the suspension. By measuring the pressure of this volume of air, we are able to calculate in a very robust way and create way, the stroke speed information of the front fork. This is very accurate solution. For the swing arm, we use a potentiometer that measures the angle, here there is a potentiometer, that measures the angle of the swing arm. As you know, there is a direct link between the, swing angular, the angle of the swing arm and the stroke of the shock absorber. And by an academic derivation, as I told you before, we can calculate the stroke speed. So, this is another way to have an accurate information of stroke speed for the real shock. Both sensors are automotive. It's really, it's really important for us, automotive technology, because it means reliability of, of the hardware. Automotive process has a defectiveness target of zero, so it's important. Before I talk about uh, of software, our ATC uses the same software of our APRC, and it's important for us for us because by using the same software means uh, that uh, for every model we have the same software. Just we have a specific calibration for each model, so the robustness of the software is higher, and the reliability of the software is higher. So from the software point of view, we use the same software for different models. Uh, from the other point of view, we use automotive technology for the reliability of the process of automotive. Is, that is much different from consumer from, um, consumer process. This is the general overview of our, of our ADD. In blue, we have inputs. We need the brake information. Stroke speed information for the for the four shock stroke speed both wheel speed information read by the ABS unit torque rider demand request read by the engine control unit and sent to vehicle control unit this is a new unit specific for our applied dynamic damping and developed from us actually the output of the system because we are talking about semi-active suspension. Uh, front damping, both extension and compression, and rear damping, both extension and compression. So until now we talk, uh, we talk about uh, general definition, why we use that kind of sensor for the currency of this formation. So we talk about hardware. Now we talk about software, about strategies. To achieve the first target of the system, comfort-oriented system, there are many well-known strategies from automotive literature show that there are many well-known strategies. We can notice two, two main strategies. The first one is the Skyhook methodology that is able to achieve the best performance comfort-oriented in the low frequency of usage of the suspension. For low frequency, think a long way on the road, so the low, this, the low speed of movement of the suspension, think on the long way on the road. Acceleration driven damping is a methodology that is able to achieve the best performance <coughs> comfort oriented at mid high frequency of usage of the suspension. Try to think a, a shorter way, so a faster movement of the suspension. We mix these two methodologies with uh, 
an exclusive patent for two wheel application. We call it mix. This mix algorithm is able to achieve the best performance in the world range of frequency of usage of the suspension. This means that this algorithm, this algorithm uses the Skyhook methodology for the low frequency and acceleration driven dynamic for the mid-high frequency of the usage to achieve the comfort-oriented target, so to minimize the vertical acceleration of the chassis. Second target of the system, handling oriented, provide the best balance possible for the bike. The system with the different strategies that works in parallel with comfort oriented strategies is able to establish with you, with the rider, a direct link with your maneuver and react by changing the damping in fork and on the rear shock to provide you the best balance possible for the bike. To better explain, I need to show you how a mechanical system, a standard system works. This diagram show, for example, the upper, just look on the upper part of the diagram, we can see the extension of, for example, suspension. If you, obviously you know that on a mechanical suspension you have, you can adjust it by click, it's a screwdriver. You can change from full closer to full open. So the system follow the full open characteristic and the full closer characteristic. If you want to change the setting in between with clicks, you change clicks and the system follow the dotted line. Semi-active systems are quite similar, just a wider range, but the system works between the minimum and the maximum, so full closer and full open. If you drive, the electronics valve, because on semi-active suspension we have an electronics valve inside the damper. If you drive the electronics valve at custom current that is similar to use clicks on the mechanical system, the characteristics of this suspension are like the, dotted, the red dotted line. But if you need a different characteristic, you can't. We have an exclusive pattern called Map Builder that allow us to define the setting of the suspension in that we prefer in between the minimum and the maximum. That green line is obviously an academic example, but we can do what we, what we want. By using uh, ending oriented strategies that recognize your maneuver, we change these characteristics that we define as we like while riding in dynamic conditions. We are able to recognize when you are braking, when you are accelerating, when you are releasing the gas, and we change the setting dynamically. It's not a switching system that recognizes a braking condition, a fixed setting, and when the system recognizes an acceleration, fix another setting and switch. No, it's not our system. We change dynamically and continuously the characteristics. This allows us to have a single map system. It's a system that follows you. It's not a system that needs to know what is your riding style. It's a single map system with the target to provide the best setting in every riding condition. In addition, with, on a pretty dynamic damping, we have the electric pilot. I prefer to call it a nice gadget than the real functionality of the system because instead to use a manual system you have by the, you can change by the, with the dashboard the preload of the rear spring. There is an actuator, an oil actuator that changes the preload on on the rear spring. The system allow for different settings, selectable when the bike is at rest. But uh, we did something of more. As I told you before. With the <coughs> potentiometer of this wing arm, of the rear wing arm, we are able to measure the angle of this wing arm. By measuring this angle, we are able also to calculate the height of the bike. As I told you before, if you are able to control also the elastic element while riding in dynamic condition, you can call your suspension as active. We have the fifth functionality, the fifth second, the fifth second. 
is called automatic setting. It's patent from us. This is the first patent of the system. The system is able to measure the height of the bike and change it dynamically, that means while riding, the preload of the rear shock to achieve the target of the height that we define. <coughs> At the end, the key factors of our Aprilia dynamic damping, it's a system that maximizes the comfort. It's a system that improves handling, easy to use with a single map, with the exclusive active mode on the rear, we are first. Before I talk about SkyU acceleration driven damping, but uh, I don't want to tell you stories regarding hooks that come from the sky and keep the frame stable where under the frame the wheels can go up and down without any influence on the frame. I don't want to tell you about miracle because this is not the truth. We are talking about telescopic suspension. And when a suspension strikes a road irregularity, you always have a spring to win. Is obvious. What I want to tell you is that we select the best strategies to achieve the best comfort in the whole range of frequency of usage of this suspension. We combine this comfort oriented strategy with other handling oriented strategies that uh, establish a direct, limit, a direct link with your maneuver to provide the best setting possible from the bike. We feed these strategies with very accurate stroke speed information of this suspension. Because if these stroke speed information are not accurate, the performance of these strategies will be lower. It's obvious. It will be less performing. I think that tomorrow you will have the chance to test our system to starting from the morning until the end of the day. You will feel the comfort of the system and especially the stability of the bike in dynamic behaviors due to the handling oriented strategies. This is really important for us because uh, to have a very, by, a very good stability of the bike uh, means uh, improve your safety while riding. That's all from my side. Umberto, it's again your time. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Very impressive. <laughs>